Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. It is Thursday, August the 8th, 2019, and I thank you so very much for joining us today. For truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is always, always a honor and a pleasure to come and spend some time in the Word of God with you. And so we are super excited. Let me tell you something. I get excited about the Word of God. And what we're going to share with you today is is a very, very simple but profound question. What did the Word say? And the reason why this is so profound is because if we don't know the Word of God for ourselves, we can misquote Scripture based off of what someone else said. We can misinterpret the scripture. We won't know who said what and to whom and to why. And we will place scripture and apply it to the wrong things in our life. And so it's so important to know what did the word say. And yesterday... Uh, And all this week, actually, we've been sharing about the word and we know that uh, the word is it. The word was with God. The word is from the beginning. The word was God. Uh, The word was sent in the likeness of flesh being Jesus Christ. And for those of us, and we always extend an invitation to those who have not receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. When you receive him, you are receiving the pure word. But what did the word say? And to what situation are we to apply such a word? And on this morning, as I was preparing and and meditating and, and, and just quoting some scriptures, that question came up. What did the word say? Because see, I might be quoting something. I might be quoting it wrong. I might be saying the the Lord said. I might be saying Jesus said. But how will I know unless I go to the word? It's important. My father, Apostle Naaman Wilson Jr. teaches, open up your Bible, quote the word, open it up and look at it. I don't want to give you my opinion. I don't want to give you my interpretation. I don't want to give you what I think it says. I woefully and diligently encourage everyone that I come in contact with, whether it's here with radio or our viewing or person to person or even in ministering sessions, pick up the word of God for yourself. Don't take my word for it. I will not have you ignorant. I want you to pick up the word of God for yourself. And I want you to look at it. You have access to the word. Use it. And so let's look at some scriptures. Our first is Zechariah 4 and 6. And this is where the Lord is talking to Zerubbabel, the governor. He said, then he answered and spake unto me, saying, this is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. And so what does that mean? Through this passage, this message was spoken to Zerubbabel, and it applies to all believers. Military might, political power, or human strength cannot accomplish the work of God. We can only do his work if we are enabled by the Holy Spirit. Let me say that again because I want to encourage someone today. The work that God has for you to do, the only way you can accomplish that work is through his spirit, through the Holy Spirit. It's not our education. It's not our money. It's not our social status. It's none of those things because you can have all of those things and not accomplish what God has for you to accomplish. 
it's some areas that your money just can't get you into. Uh, it, it, it just won't happen if the Holy Spirit does not allow the access. So let me read that again. And this is Zerubbabel, uh, the governor, and the Lord is speaking to him. And this is Zechariah 4 and 6. He says, Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel. He's talking to a governor. He's talking to a leader. For those who are in uh, leadership position, pastors, apostles, uh, leaders in the church, if he uh, business owners, the work that God has for you to do, the, the work that he has ordained for you to do, your purpose in life, uh, it's not by your might. I'm sorry to tell you, it's not by your power. I, 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 I'm sorry that someone has given you the wrong interpretation. It's by his spirit. Now, now, don't get me wrong. We'll try. And we might think that we have fully accomplished something. But if it's not by his spirit, you're not meeting the fullness you're not meeting all. When we allow him to do it, the struggle doesn't seem to be so intense and so hard. And let me say this before we read the interpretation of this again. The enemy is, is, is fighting against your purpose. Satan doesn't want you to come into the knowledge of Christ. He does not want you to relinquish your own ability and to allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you. Because he knows that if you relinquish your own ability, if you relinquish your own know-how, if you rely totally on the Holy Spirit, if you stand on the word of God alone, deliverance is going to take place. The lost are going to come and accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Those who have backed away will reconcile unto the Father. Oh my God, if you could only, only, only get an understanding that the fight is not against you personally. It's against the destiny that's in you. This message in Zechariah 4 and 6 was to Zerubbabel, the governor, but it is to all of us who believe, who have accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Military might, political power, or human strength cannot accomplish the work of God. We can only do his work if we are enabled by the Holy Spirit. Jesus entered his ministry in the power of the Spirit, and the church was empowered by the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. Only if there is a continual flow of the Holy Spirit's presence and power to empower our lives in witness and service will God's kingdom come and his will be done on earth, my God. This is why Jesus baptizes his believers in the Holy Spirit. That is awesome. That's awesome. That's some good word right there. Yes, I just used improper English because that was good word. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to go over to Matthews 4 and 4. Because we need to know it's not by bread that we survive, but by the word of God. And so ask yourself this question as we go on to break. What did God say? If you are looking for a place of worship while in the Tampa Bay area, we would like to invite you to True Life Community Worship Center. The address is 7402 North 56th Street, Building 600, Tampa, Florida, 33617. The leaders of this house are Senior Pastor Calvin Green and Pastor Angela Green. The schedule of services are as follows. Every Sunday morning, True U University begins at 9 o'clock a.m., Morning worship begins at 10.30 a.m. And on Wednesdays, Bible study begins at 7 o'clock p.m. Once again, that is True Life Community Worship Center, 7402 North 56th Street, Building 600, Tampa, Florida, 33617. We would like to take this time to invite you to visit us on our website, 
at angelfergusonsministries.simplesite.com. Via the website, we have our School of Ministry and Mentoring programs, the curriculum that we offer. We have a free learning lab, Motivation That Inspires Bookstore, our publishing division, as well as Hope and Truth magazine. Please visit us today at angelfergusonsministries.simplesite.com. Also, we would like to extend an invitation. If you would like for us to make mention of your ministry or an upcoming event for your ministry, please email us at afergusonwrp at yahoo.com. There is no charge for us making men mention of your ministry or an upcoming event for your ministry. All it takes is for you to email us at afergusonwrp at yahoo.com. If you have just tuned in, you have tuned in to the balance of life and we're asking a question, what did the word say? And you really can't answer that question unless you have taken the time to get into the word of God for yourself. Never take someone else's account for what the word of God says. Pick up the word for yourself, pick up the Bible for yourself. I I encourage that you get a good study Bible with a commentary. And also, before you begin to read the Word of God, pray. Because the Holy Spirit has a job and, and He does it so well, let me tell you, He wants to do this. He wants to lead us and guide us into all truth. He wants to reveal unto us the mysteries of God's Word. That word that abides in you, he wants to help you to understand it. And so before you pick up your word, ask him to lead and guide you. To reveal unto you the mysteries of God's word. Here's something else that the word of God does. The word of God cleanses us. Uh, he says to us, and let's, let me go over here right quick because I always like to give you scripture. Over in John 15 and the third verse, it says, Now ye are clean through what? Through the word which I have spoken unto you. And so once again, what did the word say? See, the word is doing something. When you read the word and when you take it in and you apply it to your life and you activate that word that's dwelling in you, it's cleansing you. So don't try to clean up yourself. Let the word clean you. Let the Holy Spirit do, oh my God, what it was meant to do. Before we went on to break, over in Zechariah, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. And now over here in Matthews 4 and 4, Jesus says, but he answered and said, it is, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And so it's the word of God that's going to sustain me first spiritually and naturally. I need the word of God in my life. And I am, I'm going to look up, uh, I want to provide one more scripture. We have another one to go to. But I definitely want to add more. We're talking about the word of God. It is powerful. It is true. The word of God will never fail. It will never change. And let me tell you something. The word of God will last forever. It will stand forever. And so I want to add that in. There are so many scriptures about the word of God. And so let me jump over right here to Isaiah 40 and 8. And it says, the grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of God 
shall stand forever. And so I can take the word of God. It's not man's word where it might be good this morning and by this afternoon, you know what it has changed. It's not like a word where, you know, you write a contract and, and you present the contract, but then you want to renege on the contract. Mm -mm, no, God's word is forever. It is forever. That's good. And so when I was, what I love about the Holy Spirit is he will continue to add until, you know, once we get in and we, we start to dig and, and, and search the scriptures, he'll begin, he'll, he'll keep adding, he'll, he'll keep adding. He's adding the word. He's taking us back to scripture. And that's what I love. We have to know what God says. Once again, that is over in Isaiah 40 and 8. The grass withereth, the flowers faded, but the word of God, the word of our God, shall stand forever. It shall not fade. Oh my God, it shall not lose its power. It shall stand forever. Matthews, once again, four and four. This is why the word of God needs to stand forever. This is why the word of God will stand forever. It says, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God it shall sustain you. It shall cleanse you. It shall deliver you. It shall make you whole. Oh my God, his word shall set you free. Oh my God, it shall give you peace. The word of God brings about joy. The word of God brings about an understanding. Oh God, the word of God, it casts away fear. What did God say? What did the word say? I can take his word. And I can apply it to every area of my life. I can take his word and I can rest and rely on it. I can be rest assured that his word, my God, Isaiah 55 says to us, the word of God shall not return unto him void. He said his word, his word. That's why it's important to know what he said, because he said, my word will not return unto me void. Oh my God, it shall accomplish that which I sent it out to do. That is over in Isaiah 55 and 11 it says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. My God, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. My God, that is good. That is good. That is so good. We're talking about the word. What did the word say? What did God say to your situation? Did he not tell you that he will deliver you and set you free? Did he not say by my stripes you were healed? By my stripes you are healed? Did he not say that you are the head and not the tail? That you are blessed coming in and going out? That you shall be blessed in the city and blessed in the field if you keep his commandments and follow his statutes. Did he not say? Did he not say that he would shield and protect you? Did not the word say that I will pray to the Father, that he will give you another comforter? The comforter is the spirit of truth. Did not the word say? What did the word say? Ask yourself that question. What did the word say? My God, that is so profound. I'm excited. I'm going to stay in that for the rest of the day. I have some other work to do. But I need that to, to, to just resonate in my spirit. I can rejoice off of that. I 
back and remind every situation in my life. Oh my God, I can remind the enemy when he comes in like a flood and he wants to send discouragement my way that I can say what the word said. I can turn to my Bible and when the enemy says that you can't do this and you can't do that and, and I'm reminded about what God said to me, what promises he said to me, I can go to the word of God. I can go to Isaiah 55 and 11 and I can remind every situation. I can remind the promises in my life. I can remind the work that I am doing for the Lord that it shall not return unto him void. He sent me to do an assignment and I shall not come by void. I shall accomplish that which he sent me out to do. You see, I am a word that he sent out and I shall accomplish what he told me to do. I shall not abort my assignment. I shall not forsake my assignment, but I shall accomplish what he sent me out to do. I will not return back void. And that which he sent me out to do, it shall prosper. It shall prosper in a way that someone is brought into the truth and the knowledge of Christ. It will prosper in the way that the lost will come unto him and ask Jesus to be their Lord and Savior. It will prosper in a way that I grow in the knowledge of Christ. It will prosper in a way that those who have walked away have returned back unto Christ. It will prosper in a way that the blind can now see and that the deaf can hear. It will prosper in a way that healing has come unto your spirit and unto your natural body. It shall accomplish that which he sent it out to do because his words take on formation. His word takes on a purpose. His word has a purpose. And there are results by his word. My God, that is absolutely good. We'll be back in just a moment. If you have not taken advantage of becoming partners in prayer with the balance of life, we would like to extend this invitation to you. There is absolutely no financial obligation to become partners in prayer with the balance of life. All you have to do is email us at aferguson.wrp at yahoo.com. If there is something specific that you want us to touch and agree and pray about with you as it is the will of the Father on earth as it is in heaven, email us today at aFergusonWRP at yahoo.com on Tuesdays. Every Tuesday is Partners in Prayer Day. We started off by dedicating an hour of prayer, which was from 6 to 7 o'clock p.m., but on this particular day, Partners in Prayer every Tuesday, we ask nothing of ourselves here at The Balance of Life. It is all about our listening and our viewing audience. It's all about those petitions before God. We ask nothing for ourselves on Tuesdays. It's all about our partners in prayer. And once again, we would like to extend that invitation to you. There is no financial obligation Simply email us at aFergusonWRP at yahoo.com. Subject would be partners in prayer, and that's all it takes. We absolutely love you. We'll be back in just a moment. If you have just tuned in, you have tuned in to The Balance of Life, and I thank you so very much for joining us today. We are asking a question, what did the word say? Not what I said, not not what, uh, and let's drop the elder, uh, let's drop the, uh, the, the, the ministry leader, let's drop those titles and say, it's not what Angel said. But what did the word say? What did God say to your situation? What did he say about your life? He said, before I, I, I formed thee in the womb, I knew thee. 
and I ordained you to be a prophet unto the nations. He said, I love you from an old. With loving kindness have I drawn thee. What did he say? Remind every area of your life. Remind your seed, your children, my God. I don't care what it may look like. If you remind the word what the word said and you stand on the word and leave it there, it shall accomplish that what it was sent out to do. Don't stop praying for your children. Don't stop praying for your loved ones. Don't stop praying for the situation. It's going to accomplish that which it was sent out to do. Now, let me say this. It might not turn out the way you want it to turn out. But just like God has a purpose and a plan for your life, he has a purpose and a plan for your children's lives. You can't give up praying for them. You can't give up interceding for the lost. Because his time is not our time. And his ways are not our ways. See, we want it done yesterday. We have this mold that we have created. And we want it to fit to our mold. But remember one day, after you had accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he began to remove branches and things from you that were not of him. And he broke you that he can remake you. Well, that's the same thing he has to do to our children. That's the same thing he has to do to the other lost. He has to break them in order to make them. My God, let me get back over to this last passage of scripture over in Luke, the sixth chapter. Here, Jesus is talking to his disciples who he has named as apostles, the 12. And he's talking to the multitude. And he began to say, blessed be ye poor for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are ye that hunger now for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now for ye shall laugh. And so whenever a situation comes up and you know that you are walking under the power and the authority of God, that you have submitted yourself, that you have begun to seek his face and you have turned from your wicked ways, you have the right, my God, to turn to the word of God. And you might be crying now, but he said, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. You can turn over to Luke 6 and say, uh, blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. And so I might be hungry now, but he, he's going to fill me. He's going to feed me. Why? Because I began to seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. And, and he said, all those things shall be added unto me. And so it might look like this right now. He's going to turn it around for my good because I love him, because I, I'm called in accord according to his will, according to his purpose. Because I have set my love upon him, he will honor me. Be, because I have set my love upon him, he will protect me. Come on, let's go over to Psalms 91. What did God say? What did the word say? Speak to that circumstances. Speak to it. Speak to that hindrance that's trying to block you. Speak to that spirit of doubt. Speak to that spirit of depression. Speak the word. Speak it. Be ye renewed in your mind today. Shift the atmosphere. Shift it, not by might, not by power, but by his spirit. It's by the word of God. What did the word say? Oh my God, I'm excited. And we're about to come to a close today. You know, I absolutely love you without measure because I believe in the potential in each and every one of you. God created you and you are precious in his sight. If he prolongs his coming, we will return on next Tuesday. Stay encouraged, encouraging others along the way.